Welcome to the Stairway to Heaven. We're coming to you bringing insights into the ever-changing high-frequency currents now bathing the planet and their effect on us all. The source of vital information for the evolving human being, I'm Gwilda Wiecka. Memories as gateways to healing the past. Memories, both good and bad, are something we all have. But what are they really? We might view them as a storage of past events, but in reality, no two people remember any event in exactly the same way. Within that, we can get lost in good memories and find ourselves living in the past or avoiding the bad memories by focusing on the future. Both approaches take us out of the present moment where our power resides. When we're in the present, we can impact both the past and the future by working through the memories rather than dwelling on them or avoiding them. How? We tend to view the events of the past as gone from our influence, set in stone and unchangeable. Whether they were times of great joy or deep suffering, we often leave parts of ourselves there. These aspects of our energy are seen as totally beyond our reach as they're tied up in the past. All we have left are good memories to be clung to or unpleasant memories best forgotten. But in so doing, are we missing the point entirely? What if those memories we either cling to or try hard to forget are anchor points to valuable parts of ourselves that we can indeed recover? What if, attached to every unpleasant memory, is a frequency bandwidth we disconnected from at the time of the trauma? What if, attached to every good memory, is an energetic part of ourselves that we never brought forward? To understand this, we'll need to visit death. What happens when we die? Regardless of the physical cause of our demise, death results when we no longer carry enough frequency to maintain physical life. There are many things that compromise our frequency. Something as simple as consuming low-frequency food over long periods of time can negatively impact our overall frequency. If the food we eat is dead and overprocessed, it offers less frequency than it takes for us to digest it. This creates a situation of diminishing returns that eventually takes its toll on our health. As discussed in Stairway to Heaven, Episode 47, What is Shamanism and How Can It Help Us Now? Trauma can cause us to disconnect from large bandwidths of our natural frequency expression. On the other hand, we tend to cling to times when we think it just doesn't get any better than this, as we believe it won't be getting any better further down the road. So what do memories have to do with the cheery subject of death? When we come to the point that our frequency is so diminished we can no longer maintain our body, it's time to vacate it and cross over. Yet, to cross over to the high frequency of the unified field, we must reverse the frequency loss process, climb back up the frequency ladder, if you will. This is the stairway to heaven. Many traditions have a concept of the frequency regaining process. To the Tibetans, it's called crossing the bardo. The Catholics, it's called purgatory, and so on. During the process of climbing the frequency stairway in order to regain enough frequency to enter the unified field, a strange thing happens. As we reach each level of frequency where we disengage from a portion of our natural expression, we're confronted by the memory of the incident which caused the loss. The memory results from re-entering the frequency of the event. Reality is dictated by frequency. Therefore, at each level of frequency, a different reality manifests. Every experience has its own unique frequency. This frequency is impacted by our perceptions of the experience as well as the experience itself. As we climb the frequency ladder, whether in death or during the evolutionary process, and are confronted with a memory, continuing our progression often involves re-examining and reframing our perception of the event as we re-enter the frequency found there. This process effectively removes the frequency distortion imposed by our perceptions at the time and allows us to reclaim ourselves from the experience, whether it was a pleasant or an unpleasant one. This is a process of self-forgiveness. And why do we need to forgive ourselves to reclaim our frequency? One major factor causing 
for sexual distortion at the time of an event is guilt. Whether through parenting practices or religious ones, guilt has been widely used to control us. Guilt is another huge topic, but suffice it to say, at this point, hidden guilt is very pervasive. It's also very low frequency expression. No one likes to feel to blame when things seemingly go wrong. It's to avoid guilt we tend to rewrite history to paint ourselves blameless. We change our perceptions of the past events to avoid the shame of being to blame. For the most part, guilt, blame, and shame are illusionary, mad-made constructs used to control. Nonetheless, these illusions cause us to disconnect from the truth of a situation, thereby distorting our perceptions and memories and compromising our frequency. If we're able to examine a memory closely and ascertain whether guilt caused us to distort it, we can forgive ourselves for the perceived mishap. This enables us to reclaim the truth of ourselves, the situation, and the frequency we lost there. Re-engaging the frequency and therefore the reality of past events explains the phenomenon of seeing one's life pass before one's eyes during the death process, or in Tibetan terms, while passing through the bardo. A good rule of thumb while making this transition, as Winston Churchill said, if you're going through hell, keep going. It's believed that if we let memories and perceived guilt stop us, rather than processing through them and regaining our lost frequency, we can get stuck in the bardo or purgatory. This simply amounts to stalling out our frequency increase before accessing the unified field. Probably one of the things ghosts are made of, but that's a topic for another episode. Reality is mapped by frequency. We can revisit any reality by reproducing the corresponding frequency. This includes realities of past, present, and future. The process of remembering is simply reproducing the frequency of the event. Even in our day-to-day -day lives, when we're triggered into past trauma by events in the present, we are, in fact, revisiting that reality. This grants us the opportunity to process and transmute the remembered experience, removing the guilt and trauma from our field and replacing it with the frequency expression we left in the incident. Unfortunately, rather than taking the opportunity to be introspective, reframe and transmute the experience, we tend to project the past event onto our present circumstance and make a rerun out of the future. Not to worry, this missed opportunity will present itself again when you die. Oh joy. Now we find ourselves in a unique situation. As the ambient frequency of the planet continues to rise, it's pushing to the surface all the places our frequency has been compromised and is therefore restricted. These compromises are the places that prevent us from increasing our personal frequency to match that of our environment. The further behind the processing power curve we become, the more pressure brought to bear on all of our restrictions. This is manifesting as the emergence of memories, anchor points to our lost frequency. Many of my clients and students are reporting a barrage of old memories surfacing in that place between waking and sleeping or randomly impacting them throughout the day. The constant barrage of memories, both traumatic and nostalgic, is accompanied by the emotions we experienced at the time. Memories are often triggered by benign events in the present, giving us a convenient place to project the accompanying feelings. Rather than take time to be introspective and recognizing the emotions have nothing to do with current events, we act them out on the world around us. As a result, during this time of rapidly rising frequency, we're witnessing massive upheaval within each individual as well as cultures at large. Masses of people are going off half-cocked, up in arms, sometimes literally, over perceived injustices that are way out of proportion to the situation at hand. When we consider the rise of ambient frequency, it suddenly becomes clear we're not losing our minds, but in effect dying while still alive, taking our physical bodies with us. Just as in the death process, our lives are passing before our eyes. Sometimes memories are just like landmarks that you simply observe as you pass by on your climb to unity. If, however, you find the same memory resurfacing again and again, it's a sure sign you left part of yourself there. 
you'll need to regain that part to continue, or you will continue to loop back rather than moving forward. Keeping a journal of your memories and examining them for consistency or discrepancy can help you discern which ones are just landmarks and which one needs serious consideration and reframing in order to reclaim your energy from them. If you're dealing with a memory you have altered to avoid perceived guilt, you'll probably find it difficult to look at. It may try to slip away when you're too closely examined or message you with discomfort. You really don't want to look here. This is not the truth you seek. Record these feelings and messages in your journal right away can be extremely helpful in staying on task and processing through the issue. The good news is that as you stay on task and confront rather than avoid the truth of the situation, you'll find the truth is much more palatable after all. The lie, simply a broken hall of mirrors reflecting your spirit inaccurately. We're collectively passing through the Bardo. How we manage this experience will dictate outcome. If we lock down and refuse to process, shoving the memories and perceived guilt back into the recesses of our unconscious and project the emotion onto the world around us, the unprocessed memories and guilt will remain there as restrictions. Soon, we'll be living in a huge frequency discrepancy between us and the world at large. Our frequency will become so low relative to that of our environment that we'll be unable to maintain physical, emotional, mental, or spiritual health. Eventually, it'll cost us our lives. Then we die, and we get to do the work on our way out anyway. It's easy to understand the tendency to avoid traumatic memories, but we also have great memories of wonderful times that we cling to. This restricts our frequency mobility as well. They can be more difficult to identify, but are every bit as damaging. Memories are anchors to particular frequency configuration. Even our attachment to pleasant memories of what we perceived as better times can impinge our ability to evolve with the rising frequencies. Often, pleasant memories of great times past are simply distorted memories with any sign of negativity conveniently removed. Why? usually because we need to feel everything is just hunky-dory so we're not to blame if it isn't. Yep, good old guilt rewrites the past in good memories as well as unpleasant ones. If we revisit pleasant memories, process and reframe them, we may find the events were not really as idyllic as we thought. It may be time to take off the rose-colored glasses in the interest of truth and spiritual evolution. By embracing the whole story, we can free ourselves from the trap of clinging to illusionary better times and move on to create better ones now. Remember, our very perception of an event impacts the frequency and therefore the reality of it. By clinging to a distorted perception of the past, we compromise our frequency mobility and with it our ability to evolve into the unified field, aka heaven. This holds true whether we're evolving while still incarnate or in the process of leaving our bodies. Both involves climbing the stairway to heaven. Thank you for joining me, Gwilda Wiyaka, on the Stairway to Heaven, where we provide updates on the energetic currents facilitating our evolution into conscious, powerful co-creators. As I'm sure you've noticed, not only do the Stairway to Heaven episodes stand alone, but they weave together to form a map to evolution and personal empowerment as we enter the new era. To revisit this or any of our past episodes, visit our archives at www.stairwaytoheavenmedia.com. If you'd like to find out more about me, my school, and the evolutionary tools we offer, visit www.findyourpathhome.com. Until next time, may you be blessed on your sacred path to wholeness. We are here. The time is now.